A class of 30 students put their names in a hat. The first name drawn out will be able to skip one assignment and receive full credit. The second name drawn out can skip two assignments. third name drawn out can skip three assignments. So how many ways can these three students be selected? So because we're picking three students, I'm going to make three spaces for them. So in a class of 30, the first name is going to have 30 possibilities. So once that name is selected, you're not going to put the name back in the hat. So now we got 29 and then 28. Okay, so now by the fundamental theorem of counting, we have a sequence of events, so we multiply these together. Okay, this is not 30 factorial, just as a reminder. This is just 30 times 29 times 28, giving us 24,360 ways. Okay, let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's say we still have our 30 name put in a hat. Three names are still drawn out, but each person is allowed to skip one assignment and receive full credit. So the difference between this problem and the previous one is that the previous problem, the first one, first name drawn out got something different from the second name. The second name got something different from the third name. So the order in which these winners were selected matters. So let's see what happens when the order doesn't matter. So we're still going to have our three winners. There's still 30 ways to pick the first one. Still 29 for the second one. Still 28 for the third one. Okay, so that doesn't change, and we would still multiply these. But there is a difference here, because let's say, just for argument's sake, let's say that A, B, and C are the winners. Okay, so let's, let's say these three students, their names were drawn out of the hat. Let's see how many ways there are to arrange these winners. So the first way is A, B, and C. Another way could be A, C, and B. They're still the winners. Let me put B first. So B, A, C, B, C, A. You still have the same winners. It doesn't matter in which order they were drawn. They're all still getting the same thing. If I put C first, then we have C, A, B, and C, B, A. So all together, there's six ways to arrange the winners. So all together, there's six ways to arrange the winners. Another way we could have figured that out without having to go through all the possibilities is if you have three winners, then for the first one, you have three ways to pick that person. Two for the next one, one for the last one. Multiplying this together, so there's six ways to arrange the winners. So what we're going to do is, back in the original way that we were solving the problem, we want to get rid of all these repeats. We will need all of them. So what we're going to do is divide by these repeats. So we're going to divide by that 6. So we get the 24,360 that we got from the first problem, but then we're going to divide out the 6 ways to arrange these people. So we're going to lower this number significantly down to 4,060. Okay, so what we've done here is actually look at two different kinds of arrangements. This one is called a combination. So this one called a combination. The one that we did above this is called a permutation. The big difference between the two is that in the permutation, the first name got something different from the second name, which got something different from the third name. So the order in which you pick these winners makes a difference. So in a permutation, the order matters. So if you switch two names, they're going to get something different. In a combination, the order doesn't matter. If I switch A and B, they're still getting one assignment that they can skip. It doesn't matter which one I picked first. So with the combination, you're going to divide by the number of repeats. So your numbers are going to get smaller. 